Are those birds tweeting outside? Does that mean it's a nice morning? Well, that can only mean one thing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to it. Supreme Commander Forged Alliance, how are you all doing? YouTubers, friends, and especially one welcome to returning subscribers of the channel. How's the 8pm doing? Hope the micro's doing well. Got a 4 versus 4 for you today on a 20 by 20 map. And no, it's not set on clutch. Some of you there, no doubt breathing a sign of relief. Yes, we've had that. You've shown at least two of those in the last week. Maybe even three. Depends who's counting. This one's 1715 average, going down just a few hours ago on Lena River. Also, guys, experimenting a little bit with the thumbnail title, had somebody say, Do you know, it'd be nice if you could include the players' names on the actual thumbnail itself. Now, thumbnail is a very limited amount of real estate. You can only put so much stuff on there, and you got to try and make it look interesting, and that includes trying to make it look interesting to people that don't know what Forge Lines is because of course that is in large part how we recruit new players but uh, enough of that let's go ahead and uh, take a look today what sort of the situation the setup is we'll have another look at the names right now just 12 points separating the two teams today it's our old favorite the Fieries versus the Coolies. Uh, 1715 average rated there, almost an epic, so not quite an hour, but not too far off. Oh, what freaks me out, and you're going to continue hearing me saying this all year, is we're already on week 12, man. Already week 12. Time just seems to be speeding up faster and faster and faster. And I'm not just talking about the speed at which players can uh, click on the mouse. Known as the APM, but that's enough of that. Let's go ahead, jump on in. Uh, see what players we've got. All right, let's fade in the trusty music. Oh, everybody is doing okay. Also had a, a comment to do with the sound. Apparently there was a little too much choppiness as and when I speak. Um, there is supposed to be a little bit of a ducking. It's called ducking with a D. Uh, just, you know, so I don't got a rant and rave to try and be heard over the explosions. Of course, the other option is I just turn the game sounds right down and have no ducking at all. Uh, I'm trying to get, give you guys the best of both worlds. Somebody was saying the duck in was a little aggressive, and so I've just eased that off a bit. So with that said and done, let's take a look at the map today and our players in question. As we said, the Fieries versus the Coolies. I'm aware some people like to go with the names, the Rellos and, and all of that good stuff, but you know what? Fieries versus the Coolies, I like that one. And let's start with the Fieries, seeing as they're also uh, Team 1 today. And we'll start over here. On the extreme left, in yellow, it's Rena X, a 16.06 rated player, going first land as the old uh, Cybran there. Um, I don't think I've had this one on the channel before, so welcome to you, sir, and your royal spikiness. I hope everything is well uh, doing the twist and shake there as he gets underway starting having access to a nearby hydro were uh, very standard matter there over to the north side then the only aeon in today's game it's yohi 1714 rated in orange also going first land grabbing his free mass points and then off to the hydro as you'd expect to his southeast then in burgundy red it's our uef friend today orb 1929 rated uh uh, so coming somewhere between World War One and World War Two is about to fight another world war today in the futuristic sense anyways uh, with mechanical robots and all that good stuff uh, yeah standard opening there Hydro and then looks like shortly thereafter going for the air fact and then last but not least for the fireys it's Psycho Ad we'll call him Psycho 1589 rated uh, going first land Hydro uh, very standard there, then the power gens, and then the airs. Almost as if this is a standard meta that players all around the world know, certainly if their rating is anything above the uh, average typical. So those guys who are average or below, take note of this opening. Land, three or four mass points, hydro, three or four energy, then your second factory. Certainly if it's air, and he's using engineers there to reclaim some trees, grab himself uh energy and a tiny bit of mass as well all right over to the flip side then in cyan it's Valorn. as some people say why'd you give this guy a little v 
in the title. And that's quite simply because his name is giving himself a little V there, Valon. 1570 rated. The Seraphim going teal coloured first and second land. Um, yeah, by... by, by, by <laughs> To put it this way, I'm, I'm very lazy when it comes to names and forge lines, and I just click Control copy and Control paste and the reason why is A, that way I can't possibly misspell it, and B, if anybody says, or any arguments about what order whose name is in, I, I can just blame Faf and say, look, I just take the order that they have it in, that's it. And so whether it's alphabetical, by score, or whether there's some sort of discrimination at work, it's not my fault. We'll slow time down just a tad as we round this off there. I love blaming other people. It's it's just one of the beautiful things about living on Earth. Everything is always everybody else's fault. I'm sure some of you can sympathise with me on that front. Flying Olsen, meanwhile, 1748. Also Seraphim, this guy going purple. First land, second air. And you can see there's already got a scout and bomber halfway across the map. In the rear with the gear then for the coolies. It's Derp. This guy, 1556, also Seraphin, and pretty much very standard here. First land, second air, Hydro. This guy going four power gens instead of three. And then last but not least, and today really isn't the least, and that's because it's our only 2,000 rated player. It's Explosive 2013 Cybran. Explosive, uh, commenting on one of my videos the other day, and very nice that, and Explosive. Uh, hello to you too. Get a personal hello, seeing as you said uh, hello to me. How you doing? Uh, also, with your royal blue spikiness, that's it. You carry on building. Don't bother hanging around giving us a wave. I know you're far too busy for that sort of stuff. Already bagging himself an upgrade there. All right, back to full pace then. We'll have a quick look at the map. Uh, hot points of contention. Clearly, this island here but also the expansion here, because if you take a look distance-wise, the expansion here, though rightly belonging to the coolest side of the island, is pretty much a sort of 50-50 split. And we're going to have to focus in on somewhere, and I'm choosing to focus in on the west side, and that's because Rena X, the 1606, gets four NGs dropped, and they're working on that land factory ultra quick. Uh, here comes the explosive with a bomber. Oh, that's got to hurt. One bomb, four kills, minute four and some seconds. That went hugely the coolest way. Some nice teamwork there. Uh, dirt with the transport explosive there with the bomber of his own who's continuing to roll forward with that bomber. What we got, four kills. Haven't missed anything. Horse is there. Almost like a little hover bomb rolls out. What's he choosing to do? Well, either Rena's dodging or... Sometimes a bit of luck goes your way and engineer moves. Explosive continues to get bombs off. And that's seven engineers in total before then also getting shot down by Rena. That is a high value bomber. Especially when you consider all of those engineers were far away from the base and they were basically, well, most of them were inside five minutes. And of course, denying the all important factory, which was huge important there. It's like Derp happily to reclaim what was started there, getting himself a little bit of uh, resources, although not showing up. Perhaps that's not the case. Some of these engineers with a tiny amount of reclaim to the name. We'll take a look. Meanwhile, in the middle, looks like Yohi doing very well there, capturing his immediate island and looks like, at least on the face of it, is also going to capture the island on the far side. There are only two mass points here, but there is a fair amount of reclaim if we zoom out what we total in there. Well, it's north of a thousand, that's for sure. But of course, strategically quite important if you can get tactical missile launchers on this base. That opens a huge amount of vulnerable targets up on the coolies. And no doubt the coolies will be aware of that. And I don't think they're going to let this island go too long without a fight. The central island there through the river... Uh, going to the fireys there towards the north, that's understandable, being closer to Reno's base. And at least for now, the southern island also going to the fireys, or of course, a much further away from this island than Valorne is, is even further away from some of Psycho's structures, Psycho moving his commander down on in. And so on the face of it, 
the fire is doing an awful lot better than the coolies and if we take a look overall the fire is the 1710 on average the coolies 1722 so the southern team at least on paper 12 points on average ahead uh, not something you'd expect to see one very small silver line into this is flying Olsen does at least manage to bag himself one of the six islands so you could argue there inside seven minutes terrible opening for the southern team despite that real nice bomb uh, from explosive they're able to pick off the expanding engineers that were going over here from the coolies Derp, not content to let it lie using the seraphim artillery to devastate in effect starts rolling those across and those are quite difficult to counter at this stage you need tech one bombers you need flares and they need to keep moving can't stand still we'll have to see Rina is the one that's going to require the apm here derp can be lazy and just have two or three streams of artillery crossing over problem is it only works up to a point we shall see all right elsewhere looks like a couple of the commanders from the fire is gathering round over here psycho and orb and huge amounts of reclaim and again i love having this statistic and so let's just have a little look this particular engineer here in the corner 267 energy 57 mass this one here 80 energy 8 mass this one here 108 on the energy 36 mass uh, this one here 262 180 and so you can see you add all of those together you're talking thousands but you know not just those but all of them you're talking thousands of energy and inside the first 10 minutes of a game thousands of energy of course worth much more once you've got fusion reactors online clearly you're just talking a few seconds and it looks like rena's been able to plug the gap here and derp decides yeah it was starting to become negative the amount of gains i was getting i'll no longer push through just get himself one real cheeky piece of artillery round go on then start opening up on the factory and with a bit of luck rena's attention is elsewhere meanwhile down here explosive reclaiming himself oh he's reclaimed it ping goes down no doubt from the north team to, as, as though to say hey you need to prevent him from being able to capture this but i think too little too late and with that a second island going over to the coolies the northern side losing one of them the fire is and with that it's a four versus two just one more would make it even we've got our initial navy engages unfolding over here the lawn and looks like he's going to bag himself an exposed mass point there belonging to Psycho. But Psycho, with his commander, moves in to deal with it personal. Gets an overcharge. Clearly didn't have enough oomph yet in his storage to bag two frigates. Psycho, though, with a couple of subs in the drink. And that is going to force Verlorn to retreat. He's got one sub and three frigates, but that is going to lose. Valon says, yeah, I hear you. I'm already backing off. I backed off before you even said it. Explosive with a reasonably strong flotilla in the middle for this stage of the game. Nine frigates, one sub on the 10-minute mark. Halfway across the map, reinforcing it all the time. And Rena now probing up against Derp's side bit. Uh, you know he's got a sub and a frigate uh, the sub is going to do wonders for him and Rena trying his luck once more with a second drop and with a tech 2 mass extractor minute 11 already this far away from any real secure area if Rena is able to pick this off 6 mantis engineers desperately trying to reclaim and a lovely piece of artillery lands Rena, you're going to have to move now. One more piece of artillery. Oh, and that's unfortunate there for Rena. The idea was there, but not much else. <laughs> I love that expression, man. But yeah, fantastic move. And it shows you that artillery used in a defensive way 
really really good as said very small silver line in there for dirt because he's getting run by losing two naval yards rena with what would you call it an all spectrum dominance force air coming in we've already got a strap bomber out here from johan ping going down there two kills Looks like Explosive is going to be able to plug that gap Navy-wise. The interest is going to be on the strap. Johin's screening it with a solitary ASF. He's now got two ASF, a couple of interceptors in the back as well. More ASF coming all the time. Come on, Yohi. What are you doing with this? Well, there we see it. Ping goes down. 14 kills. Flying Olsen moves in with a solitary ASF there to pick it off. Yohi quick off the mark. Olsen with a second ASF. It's going to be close. Is Yohi able to keep it alive? Oh, he tries to get clever with the turns and loses it. Not too far off a rank of vet there. Flying Olsen just about able to hang on to that, I think, there. Flying Olsen and generally the Southern team are going to be very pleased with how that went. Yohi with his strap bomb rush caused, what's that, a couple of mass points, arguably three tech twos. Could have been a lot worse, I think. This time, Flying Olsen's turn to repay the favour and also just able to damage, what's that? Two or three tech two mass points there. And so pretty much even Stevens there, both of them get shot down. Players feeling each other out there. And look down here, Villon gets himself the crucial tech two destroyer. That's huge, especially when you had a number of subs there that were starting to have their way. Fire is getting pushed back now explosive providing reinforcements in from the west yeah and orb if he knows what's good for him is going to pull all the way back now his solitary still be managed to get out the way this way is also on a one versus one he does have the health on his side though a full health versus a half health Velons with a couple of kills but no vet we'll see what happens there in the end? But Rina looking increasingly strong in the Navy, despite, you know, that very early attack. We saw explosive divert forces over, kept up in the game. And it looks like he's going to require it again. We've got a Navy HQ here from Derp, but it's only halfway along with its destroyer. Explosive, at least with a cruiser. Also with a couple of subs, but this is going to be nasty. Look at that build capacity go down. How painful is that? Derp does get himself a single torpedo launcher online. Doesn't manage to bag itself a single kill. Uh, damages one of the frigates somewhat, but this here is huge. Derp with a Navy HQ that was now two-thirds on the way to putting out a destroyer goes down. Explosive looks like he's going to win this one, but that is going to set the Southern team back more than somewhat. Derp just can't seem to get a break in the drink. Rena, incredibly aggressive. The 1606 versus the 1556, 50 points ahead there. Psycho brings a couple of Tech 2 uh, subs there. Very nice indeed with the stealth. And at least for now looks like they've evaded Valorne's torpedo bombers. I wonder if Psycho knows that yet or not. Looks like he's trying to bring him back. Doesn't realise that they've been let be. And now the fire is with the UEF shield cruiser frigate combo. Make sure that you've got uh, some anti-submarine capability here as well. In fact, we do what am I talking about? We've got a destroyer. 
Hope says, listen, I'm a 1929. I know exactly what I'm doing. And here we see it now. So all of these torpedo bombers there from Flying Olsen, there was at least six of them attacking this. And it looks like almost all of those torpedoes are going to fall into the shield. And in that time, the shield goes down by about 60%. And the cruiser there belonging to Orb deals with them all. Derp desperately trying to get re-established here in the Navy. I would say the best thing Derp could do right now is spam. You know, forget trying to upgrade because every time you upgrade you lose construction capacity. And Rena's shut that down at least two or three times so far this game. Just go, more engineers, more yards, spam, spam, spam. Just try spam. And then with that, buy yourself a bit of time. Don't forget, explosive is helping out to a large part. And then once you manage to hold on to your yards for a few minutes, then think about going tech two. Dirt with a commander here right up front. Standing still like this when you're 17, 18 minutes into the game, very, very dangerous. You just one tack missile snipe away, a strap bomber snipe away from death. Right to see Dirt, if nothing else, have his commander on a little patrol or ideally bring it home to safer pastures. Huge torpedo strike over from Psycho. And together with these Tech 2 Navy, this here is going to be a massacre from Velorn's point of view. Oh, and we've also got Psycho with the Nanite torpedo launcher here. Two kills so far to his name. He's got stealth as well, so it'll be hard to see. And add on to that, he can just pinch any of this mass should he feel like it. Yes, very dangerous if he does get spotted, but so far, it's like the Fireys have got air dominance in this area. Explosive trying to nab some of the mass here from this area, but again, with these torpedoes, I'm not sure he's going to get it. Alas, no. Quick glance over on the west side. Rena continuing to look very strong. Dirt finally with a destroyer there. That's been handed over to him from Explosive. Dirt being Seraphim. And these subs chasing down a huge number of units. And Dirt there made to pay the price. Sad to see. Explosive trying to cover him, but Explosive's got problems of his own. Cybrans versus this UEF. Does he have the uh, counter intel boat? Well, it looks like maybe he does. See that orb struggling to get a firing solution on this. Can't see it. And where is the counter intel boat? You watch, he just it didn't have one. It's just the ray. Oh, there it is. Yeah, right first time the mermaid. And as well, the Tech 3. Huge advantage when you've got Tech 3 sonar that you can move around part of the basically like a walk-in radar station for the navy all right so much action so far and looks like the coolies have finally been able to plug the most critical aspects of it uh, all fronts stabilizing somewhat uh, derp still having a little bit of bother up here losing some of the most exposed mass points but looks like able to hang on to the all important naval yards We'll take a quick look at the intel, at, at the economic situation then. And we'll have a look at the intel as well if you like. So, uh, take a look. Mass income totals 927 versus 812, favoring the northern team. Uh, that's going to be in no small part down to their expansions on the islands, as well as then knocking out Derp's eco here. Look at this. Another couple of mass points down here. Arena with a fight, Tech 2 fighter bombers having their ways over here as well with the mass points. So Derp struggling a little bit on this one. Picked he is, despite his very high rating, below the average at 1556. He's not the lowest, but he's certainly on the lower end of the scale. It does feel like he's getting the brunt of it over here. 
It's got a huge amount of area to try and cover. It's a long ways from his base. Of course, that's always a disadvantage. But Explosive has really been lending a hand. It feels like very critical engage here. Kind of rooting for Derp on this one. Don't want him to lose everything again for a third or fourth time. And with the amount of subs that Rena's putting forward and destroyers of his own, the Coolies are going to have to get more destroyers on the area as well. And this is where Derp, Derp, you need to work with the team. The Coolies need to work together on this one. Rena has got a larger force, but the Coolies working together, I think this is going to be very close, providing they work together. That's it. We've got the counter intel here from Explosive as well. And as we suspected, the coolies working together there. Explosive keeping his pal in the game. I think Derp's going to be very thankful for that. Now, uh, Rena here is starting to take losses that is unsustainable. Adding to that, a huge amount of reclaim there left for the coolies. We're talking two, two. Well, easy. We're easy talking 6,000 there. Easy. subs having their ways versus these cruisers and frigates there are at least a couple of destroyers left and those finally taking care of the submarines and Rena if he knows what's good for him is going to have to back off it's never nice to lose a huge engage especially when you know your opponent's going to be the beneficiary of all the mass but at the end of the day at some point you're chucking good money after bad and you cannot sustain that. This engineer here done very well for itself. Bags itself almost a thousand masts before going down. The shows having an engine in the right place at the right time. Despite the sacrificial nature of its mission, overall does well for the team. And some real nice micro here from Velon taking advantage of the beam weapons versus projectiles one can miss one can't and you can see they're just the little circles let's have a little look at Velon's uh, orders well there you see him just constantly moving old shift round and round and round and that is screwing up the Cybern's targeting abilities and it looks like Psycho realises that backs up a little bit. Although Psycho does have enough units on the front line to gain from all of this mass. And with all of that mass, he can put out more units on the line. Engineer here from Valorne, heavily damaged. Bagging itself mass. How much so far? 338. How much after this next suck? 445. So over 100 mass per suck. Huge waves of torpedo bombers now from the coolies. And despite the fireys making huge advances, starting to get the impression. Dirt pushing out from his side. Rena's been pushed back. Dirt gets the mass there as well as explosive. And that's right, explosive uh, helped out in large part. Over here, coolies dominating the skies. And with that massive wave of torpedo bombers that came out of nowhere kind of forces Yohi into the engage. We saw what happened the other day when the air player lets his dominating naval forces go down to torpedo bombers from the other side. Doesn't take too long to collapse even with hundreds of units in the game. Of course talking about the epic settings from a couple of days ago. What a game that was. And it looks like the fire is Yohi there able to hang on to that engage. The coolies switch across the sides, trying to put Psycho to bed. And with the amount of air that they've got here, what we're talking about. Yohi, come on, get stuck in, pal. 76 ASF. It's like the coolies recognize that. Back away. More torpedo bombers brought in here from Flying Olsen. And it looks like most, if not all of those, are going to go down for naught. 
crucial cruiser here from Velon. That's going to dissuade Yohi from pushing ever further in. Does its job and somehow Velon able to hang on to three of these destroyers. Very important. Torpedo Bombers goes after the heavily damaged destroyer. Somehow not able to finish it off. Ten kills. Oh, and it's kept alive. I think he's going to bag it this time. And indeed, he does. Belon there hanging on just by the brink. And now, lovely front down here from Derp. Looks like he's been able to get through the most critical part of this. He's using these Tech 2 destroyers wonderfully and there's just nothing Rena can do about this everything Rena's sending forward here is going to waste Rena needs a better front of his own I'm not sure what this is about entirely perhaps a lapse of concentration and the coolies at least on the western side looking unstoppable right now Rena just desperately chucking frigates forward. Anything to try and divert some of the shots away from these destroyers. But this crucial stage does pick off one destroyer. If he micros, I'm sure he can get... There he is, another heavily damaged one down. Yeah, Reno's got bother. And the coolies throwing more torpedo bombers forwards. Yohi there picks off some torpedo bombers coming across as if the southern team need more torpedo bombers in this area. Who do in the northern team? And there we see it. Rena and Yohi chucking torpedo bombers of their own forwards. But it looks like the damage has been done. At least 12 naval yards there belonging to Reno going down. Does have himself a battleship online. Now a second one. Better late than never, but he needs the escort ships, the screen vessels, the frigates, the destroyers, the cruisers. And the coolies have wiped those off the map. And then as if problems weren't bad enough, Derb now with a couple of battleships. What a game. like Valorne over here is starting to get pushed back a little bit and that's because he's facing off versus three battleships so we're starting to get a little bit of a twist in motion it feels like Cooley's starting to make some headway up the western side and is starting to collapse a little bit down the east fire is still very dominant in the central position as they have been all game and battleships and battle cruisers from orb now on the line well, roll your shield forward. Orb says, yeah, I've got it, I've got it. And those battle cruisers may be able to back themselves this heavily damaged battleship here belonging to Derp. Derp's going to try pull it back. Zillions of missiles raining in from the Seraphim and UEF cruisers. Backs themselves one of the destroyers, the battleship. 7,000 hit points out of the 49. 10 or 15 percent health there Strategic and it's eating missile fire and it looks like Cooley's just able to keep it alive first nuke out fire is sending it across the ways where's that gonna go Strategic launch detected. and the coolies what feels like first time all game finally kicking the fire is out of the middle now, Newt continues to traverse it. I was going to say, on a map this size. Oh, and it's a nuke on nuke. Flying Olsen's running away from his base. And his strategic missile defense is like 90% complete. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Another 20 or 30 seconds for sure. He would have had that sorted and in the clip. And with that... Huge amount of devastation to the Coolies air player. But at least it would appear that the favour is going to be repaid. Yohi 
Oh no, and he flies his air over the air grid, at least partially. I think Yohi had a slightly more distributed base there, manages to keep hold of a few of his uh, air factories there, the air grid. In fact, uh, same down here to be fair for Flying Olsen. I think both of those players could, f could have fared a little worse. Yes, the priority was to take out the nuclear launcher as well as anything else. Rina here. Looks like he's been able to plug the gap a little bit. Things going down. And battleships versus Tech 1 frigates and Tech 2. Because he's got frigates of his own. That's going to leave these battleships providing... He selects his targets to go after the Tech 2. I'd like to see him focus down on the Tech 2. But it looks like for now, the battleship's having a bit of problem with getting a broadside on. And Rena here, looks like despite collapsing and losing all of those naval yards, Panic built a shed load more back at base, and at least on the face of it, it's worked out for him. The coolies perhaps leaving him be and diverting forces across to the middle a little prematurely. Trying to get rid of Orb, who right now needs help if he's not going to get kicked out. Making these battleships work for him, loses one just as another comes online. He's got cruisers at the back. And that's explosive looking, he's losing a lot of vessels there. It was light on screening ships. And looks like Orb there made him pay the price. It's not like land where once you get to Tech 3, you don't need to worry so much about Tech 1 anymore. Navy is very different in that regard. Air as well, you know, you Tech 3, what, what's Tech 1 at that point? An explosive, once again, diverting more naval ships over to help his pal out here on the west. And that forces Rena back again. Explosive just team playing like nobody's business. And you can see here, it's not always to his benefit. I mean, explosive there losing that fight in the middle as he diverts so many ships over. Once again, Rena pushed back. Things looking a little light here. Nice little side attack here from Rena. A flanking move. Problem is, it's running into battleships potentially. Unless Derp doesn't see it and moves out the way. <laughs> Just very, very. To say static is the wrong word. It's non-stop action. But looks like Psycho knows how to reclaim. Like, Psycho is getting the benefits of most of this mass. Yes, Valona's Tech 3. Sub Hunters. And they may or may not be able to bag themselves this battleship. The problem is they're so vulnerable to air snipes. Alone now with an air snipe of his own. And I reckon that battleship from Psycho there that going down. And yeah, here we are. Torpedo bombers coming in now. Versus Valon's Tech 3 submarines. Submarine. Submarine. And say it's a submarine if I like. Just huge i'm just wondering are the fireys starting to collapse a little bit the coolies now playing together real nice air from derp navy from valon screening cover from flying olsen but at least on the face of it psycho with enough asf there i'm wondering why flying olsen didn't fancy taking that on 223 versus what we got here from psycho 30. There are, however, an awful lot of cruisers here belonging to Psycho, so that's probably why Ballon didn't fancy flying over it. I think Ballon is starting to make a little bit of headway. 
with all of these subs. That's going to force Saito to ease off on the cruiser production, go more on the destroyer. And then a bit like the old rock, paper, scissors, that leaves him vulnerable on the other end as well, providing he can keep these subs alive. Saito keeps throwing torpedo bombers forward and they keep getting at least one pass. Blon does have a few cruisers in the back, but they're too far back, feels like. And this huge force of Tech 3 Seraphine subs there going down. Now they can do about it. Checking back in the middle. More battleship versus battleship. Explosive this time with a few. Well, if you want to argue, destroyers in this game are used as a screening vessel. I'm not so sure. They've certainly screened for the battleships, but. And it looks like they're all be able to hang on to that and push out and add on to that. There's a lot of mass there. Real problem over on the west side. But Rina with RAS presets down in the drink, reclaiming a huge amount of mass. Rina is going to be able to afford to reproduce naval yards here quite quick. Yes, there's an awful lot of engineers out from the coolies, but they've already reclaimed their side of things. Providing Rina can hang on to this front line. It's going to be close though. The coolies are pushing through again. And Rina very short on units. And now the coolies starting to kick the fireys off these central islands. In fact, two of them in the coolies' hands. Soon to be three. Two of them a complete no man's right the way. One island still belonging to Rina there. But that is at risk of collapsing before too long. And it looks like the coolies are not going to make the same mistake again, which is leaving Rena alive before the job's over. This time they're pushing through. Take out the naval HQ a moment after the battleship comes out. That's a huge loss there for Rena. Yes, he's continuing to spam up naval yards. But. Well. He's maxed out on APN. Most of these are just sat idle. Yeah, Frigate's starting to get right in the back of Arena's base, tickling away at his build capacity. Battleship going down with just six, well, got seven kills. Bags itself a Frigate in the nick of time. Arguably not the best ever. And this time it's Orb's turn to re-support. Realises if our Navy guy goes down, I'm going to take the brunt of everything. Risks pulling ships off his own front line. Does have himself a huge amount of eco though. And Psycho, well, in no small part thanks to his expert use of... Battle space dominance, navy and air has managed to push Valorn all the way back. And so it really is a bit of a cartwheel motion going on here. It's difficult to say who's getting the upper hand right now. On the face of it, the coolies are in the mid, so you could argue maybe favoring the coolies at this moment in time. Nice wave of torpedo bombers there laying down a lot of damage on the battleship. Belonging to Explosive. And Orb pushing through. I'd like to see him push through a little more. You can see the coolies throwing away screening ships here. Trying to tie up the targeting abilities of these ships. Well, we actually got battleship, 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 battleship. Six battleships, now five. Strategic launch detected. Oh, it's a nuke right in. This nuke, if it's allowed to land, is going to break the northern team's naval right open. Because it feels like the north have got this. Now, they're not moving. And they're sending more naval units this way. I help right now with all my Navy, says Explosive. 
Well, that is a loss that the Northern team could not I'm not sure they're going to be able to withstand that. That was a huge amount of units that were able to plug this gap. And look at this. As soon as the nuke collapses, Cooley's moving into the gap that's now opened. Battle cruiser, at least, that's going to help with all of these smaller units running by another battleship. And so all but least able to resupply those vessels. But just think if they... He's already got three or four Tech 3 ships on the line where that nuke impacted. That would have been eight or nine had that nuke not gone down there. And at least for now, Orb has got numbers here despite eating that nuke. And that is going to cause Dirk bother. Dirk somehow hanging on. Huge waves of torpedo bombers coming down from Yohi. An explosive helping out his red... <laughs> say helping out his red friend. Going against his red friend there, Psycho. Helping out his teal friend. Valon, his cyan friend. Who needed it? It was still very heavy on the subs we see here. Valon's base was almost wiped out there. Psycho playing brilliantly. But this time, dealing with huge waves of torpedo bombers his own. Sounds like support commanders going up there. Now just starting to get the feeling. The aircraft carrier here with 47 kills. But looks like the torpedo bombers are saying, you're the problem. The aircraft carrier there with a large number of kills. Doesn't look like it's going to get any more. And now Psycho, despite taking all game to push through, suddenly collapsing very, very quickly. Like a house of cards. The weak spot was Explosives Navy and some air from Flying Olsen. Seems he had the foresight to get his stealthed up nano, nanite commander out the way. Fireys get some air in the area. Put a stop to those torpedo bombers, but another huge wave here from Flying Olsen. Sees Yohin able to see that? Well, he is. Elects not to go for it. Flying Olsen moves his air across to cover, and that opens up Psycho's base again. It was eating once again more and more torpedo bombers. And looks like with that, Psycho is almost completely out of the drink. He's got the last couple of ships left, one of which is an aircraft carrier. That's going to be so vulnerable to this. Yohi oh, thinks about it and then goes against. And I think that's going to cost Psycho his... Air. And it does indeed. His Navy HQ there goes down. And could this be an air engage? Well, Yoi thinks twice about it. Does then make a move for these torpedo bombers, but the damage there has been done. He don't want to lose too much over the top of the anti-air here from the coolies. I can respect that. He's lingering. He's really thinking about it. Finally makes the move. Backs away. New coming across. And is this a defensive new from the northern side? It is. But it looks like just a little bit too long. And it looks like almost everything there belonging to the coolies manages to stay alive. A little bit more one way, a little bit more the other. That would have been a nice snoop. Oh dear. Despite that very, very strong opening from the fireys, they're beginning to collapse. And this time across the board, some brilliant team play all round. Time to switch gears. Huge Valiant 
effort here from Yohi. Trying to keep Orb in the game. Yohi with a few naval yards of his own, although it looks like it's primarily to spit out engineers for economic purposes. Orb with a huge number of torpedo bombers now. And finally, the air engage we've been waiting for. Yohi with 370 ASF. Flying Olsen there with a hundred and some. Of course, we did click on him second, but Yohi winning wins the air engage, and I don't believe it. Despite all of this, Psycho switches gears, puts himself out a Scathis. The watering can of doom. Rains droplets down on the opposing team, and it looks like Flying Olsen is the first. Oh, and his air grid that was already damaged from the nuke goes up in its entirety. Flying Olsen says in chat, Scathis. Oh, yes. Coolies. You may have won the battle in the drink. But now, with Scathis fire raining across, arguably Psycho gave up his uh, navy advantage to re-divest his money, his mass, his income towards the Scathis, and it looks like it may have been the decision that's going to keep his team in the game. This time, Derp's the one. Strategic launch detected. Zerp gets a nuke out. Strategic launch detected. Scathis fire comes in. I think Zerp quite lucky on that little round not to lose more. Of course, does have himself the Seraphim shields. Nuke out from both players. Is this a defensive nuke? It is, and that is a beautiful defensive nuke. Very nice indeed. That's going to buy Orb a bit more time to set up defences in base. And now a nuke out. Used against Rena's Navy construction facilities. is going to bag himself the Tech 3 HQ. Huge credit to Rena for even being able to re-establish himself in the Navy game at all. The real problem that the Southern team have right now is this Scathis. They need to switch gears a little bit. I think I'm out doing something else. And this time it's explosives based that's time to, well, see a little bit of explosive action. Don't know how I'll come up with them. More and more and more. Yeah. Devastating. And this is where you get to this stage of the game. It pays to distribute your base rather than having one big centralized shielded up area. Just distribute things, you know, fusion like this. Power here, then one here, then one over here. And yes, the Scaphis can eventually pick them off, but it's going to divert a huge amount of rounds of artillery going after just one target rather than centralizing and it looks like rena telly mazes himself in oh my goodness bags himself the commander then goes up himself it was close and it's a two for one minute 49 the first commander dies a few moments later the second rena Taking out Flying Olsen, whose base then takes out Rena. The Scathis fire continues to rain. And from my point of view now, it feels like Yohi's priority is to keep the Scathis and this particular area free from hazards. Psycho trying to deal with Raz presets that are coming across the way. Hugely important. You don't want to be trying to deal with artillery tech one spam or anything like that at this stage. And it looks like the Northern team know it. Their priority to defend this area. Explosive telemazers in. 
But he's got a surprise waiting for him. I'm sure he thought he'd be out the way of the point defence. Perhaps wasn't expecting a huge number of whalers to be waiting for him. And that was a beautiful volley there. And Dirk's base. Well, what do you think to that, pal? Stood amongst the destruction. Got to feel a little bit. is halfway down and it looks like Dirt thinks yeah I think it's time to go now don't you Ping goes down and it's just uh, gonna be a matter of luck is this lot of artillery raining down from the Scathis gonna connect with him or not and it looks like he was able to avoid the bulk of it certainly if he had stayed still I think that would have got him of course, with the amount of randomization from the Scafis, you never quite can tell. And Scuffis, uh, correction, Derb now controlling the majority of the Navy on his team has got to avoid the Scafis fire. And it looks like Saito says, right, I'll tell you who I had any yet. This guy. And retrains the Scafis towards Valorne's base. In come the rounds. And at least on the face of it, first volley, Valon gets away with it, loses a couple of mass storages here and there, but other than that, I think very lucky indeed. Strategic launch detected. Experimental gunship, the Soul Ripper from Orb. Very nice way to deal with landfall here from the opponent opposing enemy. Beautiful nuke there. Used defensive from the north side. Who were buying themselves a lot of time. And despite the southern team completely dominating the navy side of it. It's starting to look like their vulnerabilities are one. You can't build a nuke defence out in the middle of the sea. And number two, the Scathis. How do we deal with that? Two players remain for the Coolies. And despite what, at least to me, seemed like a huge comeback on Navy. Psycho comes with the perfect response. Now this, if it shows nothing else, is Psycho is very light on air defense. Look at this, just hovering torpedo bombers from Derp, and they get to hover an awful long time before going down. If the coolies are paying attention to that, they may have an answer to this. But Yohi continues to throw nukes out, and is now getting artillery spam walking through his base. And if he's not careful, may lose this air grid. Well, I think Derp's attention was elsewhere. More Scafis, more Nuke. And this time it's Valorne's turn to eat one. Valorne, I don't think, even bothers to try and get away from that one. Realises, yeah. It's starting to feel a lot like GG. And Derp, the 15.56 rated, is left holding the can for his entire team. Of course, almost bit the dust earlier on, thanks to that Scathis fire. And despite controlling 75-80% of the map, I'm not sure he can do much with it. He certainly can't concentrate anything of value anywhere thanks to the nukes and the scathis fire and that leads me to think what's he gonna do fly nolson says make transport for the acu and then go strat more scathis fire raining down it looks like the scathis is trained on derp's commander Ping's going down. 
Valorne says Rambo. It is. It's the Rambo preset. In fact, there's two Rambo presets here. Letting Derp know. Make use of these. And once again, it's a roll of the dice. Are these droplets of doom gonna connect with Derp's face or not? Well, two of them. And Derp thinks, yeah, gonna have to find a deeper puddle than this. Continues to try and run. More droplets raining through. Just trying to make more and more artillery spam up there. The tech one, and he can't build a base. That's the problem because as soon as he tries, it's going to get primary. How many kills is this? Uh, oh my goodness, it's happened once again. A defense satellite used defensively. And that's going to be the perfect way to deal with uh, Tech 1 land spam. Looks like Psycho said, I've had enough of this. Send the whalers. Where's his commander? Yes. Oh, Psycho. Oh, my goodness. Lasers Derp. Derp gets in a transport, so he control K's, shoots him down. And with that, the Fireys get the team avoiding the epic title fantastic game what a game says rena indeed it was ladies and gentlemen i hope you enjoyed that one and until next time from me wherever in the world you may be take care bye bye